Hello everyone and welcome back. We are still on this Storm Collectibles opening train. So everybody get aboard because we are about to go right into Cyber Smoke, the secret hidden character of Mortal Kombat 3. Which is very very nice. Of course Smoke was a hidden character in Mortal Kombat 2. And when the Cyber Initiative happened he was captured and turned into Cyber Smoke. Unless you're playing Mortal Kombat 9 then Smokey Void of Smoke of Aid's capture and Sub Zero's turn into the Cyber Initiative instead, which is a slightly different timeline. So, here we have Cyber Smoke from the original Mortal Kombat 3. Uh, let's read what it says. It says he has a smoke effect, the smoke fatality, force bomb, or force fed bomb, the spear, and the regular smoke bomb. And obviously, that's him doing his uppercut, which is um, his little teleport uppercut, which I think is 4 4 heart kick. I think. Maybe 4 4 heart punch. So, <clears throat> originating from Prague, Thomas Vrbrada, Vrbada, Vrbada, V R B. How do I pronounce that? Vrb, Vrbada. Hmm. Was recruited by the Lin Kuei for his impressive ability to escape capture. Able to transform into a wisp of smoke, his talent has proved useful in countless missions. Smoke has no memory of his childhood. His only family is the Lin Kuei. More specifically, the younger Sub-Zero, who is like a brother to him. It has been Smoke's hope that through the Lin Kuei, he will discover his past and the origin of his powers. Well, I can tell you his past and his origins of his power right now. He was possessed by a demon, which uh, the Lin Kuei did to him, I believe. It's either the Lin Kuei or Quan Chi. And it's a smoke demon, and it feeds on his body, and he is basically host to this parasite. And um, later on, he starts to fight with the demon, and then I think he cooperates with the demon. And by the time you get into Deception, or is it Armageddon, he's he still has some of the metal armor, but the majority of his body is just smoke. He's just been entirely taken over by the demon, and he's more a uh, smoke demon than he is human. But um, yes, that's the thing. And then I think there's also a part in the comics that it said that the smoke demon didn't actually give him the smoke ability, that that was the ability that he was born with. So it turns out that he was special without the demon inside of him. Um, so yes, that is smoke, at least that's what I remember of him. Uh, he's a very, very cool character, he's always one of my favourite characters. And this is, of course, brand new, so that means we get to unseal the smoke into this universe. Let us cut him open. I don't know what cell tape they're using here, it's supposed to be vibranium, or titanium, or some sort of otherworldly version of cell tape. And uh, there we have it. Smoke is now open, so let us see what we have. Let us get rid of the box. The box is the same as always, this is the very nice Mortal Kombat symbol and the Mortal Kombat logo in the background. And let us see what we have. I think this is the uh, San Diego Comic Con version. Um, I think. I'm not entirely sure on that one. But uh, I think the smoke is a special edition uh, figure. So let us see what we have. Let us take off this first bit of plastic. Which is uh, quite firmly sealed in. that over there and let us see the figure himself first. His hand just came out of here for some reason. And here is Smoke which is he should be an identical model to Sector but obviously with the different finish. Actually it's here from the look of him um, it wouldn't take that much uh, color, dis um, color distortion to turn this into Cyber Sub Zero. It's very, very similar to him. I didn't realize how how close the coloring was between the two. Obviously, the Cyber Sub Zero is a lot lighter than this. But Smoke was never grey. He was always this kind of metallic, -y, kind of sheen, purplish kind of color. And of course, the chest does open, as does with Sector. Uh, Sector was the previous review, so if you haven't seen that, go take a look at that and you'll, you'll see everything that Sector does. Smoke should be able to do the same. He has the 
the neck movement, you know, the uh, butterfly arms, the shoulder rotation, the double, the double elbow joint, focus, the double elbow joint, uh, the wrist movement, and obviously the replaceable hands. He has the double knee movement, so you can get a lot of articulation. The leg is on this rotational swivel part here, which is very, very nice. And it's also very, very good because it's very stiff and allows for great posability and the ability to balance, uh, which I did this with Sector. Let's see if we can do it again with Smoke. Or we can just pose him into a high kick. There we go. Immediately. Uh, lower the camera just a little bit. To show you, there we are. So as you can see, these figures are really well made. Um, very, very impressive to be able to just do that. Because normally it would take quite a while to be able to set that up, but um, these figures are just so well designed that you can just do that immediately. And uh, Smoke has a very, very similar wind pose to Sector, where he just stands with his hand in his chest, which is the... Um, the the Lin Kuei thing, I believe. It's also interesting because the Lin Kuei symbol uh, changed because it used to be uh, standing with one hand up, uh, raised into the air. Which uh, now it's not. So, that's interesting. Shall we get rid of this? So, uh, the accessories that Smoke comes with. Let us look first at the Scorpion Grab pole, which is Sellotaped in here. Hmm. At least I think it's sellotaped. Some otherworldly plastic. It's not sellotaped, it's, it's, it's just plastic. It just uh, it somehow sticks. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Does not have much to do with that, but uh, very cool, all the same. So. The Scorpion Grapple. Uh, when Smoke was in Mortal Kombat 2, he was just a clone of Scorpion and uh, therefore had very much the same moves as uh, Scorpion. So, because of that, uh, Smoke is the only member of the Lin Kuei that I'm aware of that actually has a grapple thing, a get over here, uh, which is the Shirai Ryu move of Hanzo Hattori. Which is uh, Scorpion's actual name. Um, let's angle down a little bit. I can definitely angle that up a little bit. And let's put Scorp uh, Smoke, this is Scorpion, into more of a pose for doing his uh, get over here. And rotate the head down so you're actually looking at the opponent. Rotate the body up so that you're actually aiming at the opponent. And there we go. There, yeah, that is him doing the get over here move, which is back back high punch, back back low punch, for forward low punch. It's been a long time since I played Mortal Kombat three, so if any of that is correct, you have to give me props. Um, it legitimately might be twenty years since I played Mortal Kombat three, so uh, do forgive if I have forgotten any of the moves. Um, well, I can tell you that uh, Sub Zero's fatality in uh, Mortal Kombat 2 is forward, forward, down, high kick, forward, down, forward, forward, high punch. <laughs> Have that memorised from when I was in primary school. So, here are the smoke effects. So, these are quite cool. This is what makes the difference between smoke and sector and cyrax, is these little bits here. So, if you remember, in the original Mortal Kombat 3, smoke had these little effects that was just little smoke pirates went, just go... All the time, and it was uh, very annoying. So uh, they've opted not to do that. Instead, what we do is we get the smoke symbols, and these should fit in underneath the armor. Unless I've got this the wrong way around. As any of you are probably aware, if you've watched a few of my videos, I am no professional. Um, which gives this even more of a realistic review because this is someone that is uh, not professional testing these out. 
And if you see someone that's professional doing it, you're like, oh, that's easy. And when you try it yourself, you're like, oh, this is much harder than what that person made it out to look. And uh, I'm showing you exactly what it is like. So, there we are. That's the first one in. It's still uh, sticking out a little bit. It's not supposed to, I don't believe. But, um, hmm, there we are. Okay, and the other one. I'm really hoping that there isn't a left and right of these and I've got these the wrong way around. I think they are both very similar. Ah, this one goes in a bit easier. And you have to get it under this uh, body part. You know what, it'd be easier if I just uh, brought this arm up a little bit. And that should just press in there like so. There, something like that. And there we are. So there is the smoke effects of smoke, which um, I think is a, a very, very cool additional accessory because it really shows the difference between smoke, Cyrax, and Sector that he has these parts. So as you can see, there's still a little bit of the, the part here, but um, you know, the chest still fully open. -o. And these parts just uh, clip in at the side underneath there. Um, I have heard people say that it uh, it stops some of the articulation, but it doesn't look like it affects any of that. I see his hair is kind of like waving over to the side, which I don't mind. I think that's uh, that's quite cool. Um, it's a bit more of a a sort of actiony sort of pose. There we are. How does how does that look? It looks a little bit more like a sort of pose for smoke. There's not actually any pose that you ever did in Mortal Kombat 3. I'm just trying to make him look nice and cool. And this foot it is in a bit of refusal. I haven't actually done anything with the feet yet. Also, another thing is this is him like directly out of the box. You can see I haven't spent any time, you know, loosening up these. Uh, limbs or anything. This is exactly what he comes like out of the box and uh, this is a brand new figure. So um, you get to see exactly what he's like you know when you first get him. So let's look at the rest of his accessories. Um, let's look at the smoke bombs or the grenades. Now these are, this is actually um, the, the sort of light plastic, the sort of light rubber. So that's very nice to see. It's exactly the same way all the way around. I need to put my hand up here just to get the camera to focus on it. So, that's quite cool. So now, um, a few of you may be thinking the bombs, but that was uh, Cyrax's thing. And yes, you are correct. But Smoke did have a fatality where he goes mental with the bombs and just does a whole bunch of them. And then it uh, shows you the world uh, just exploding. Um, like as if Smoke just detonates and just takes out the entire planet with him. So that's quite uh, quite hilarious. The next part is his other fatality, which is the force fed smoke bomb, which has movement in it. It's got the rotation here and here. And the grip also moves, I think. Oh it also spins. I didn't realise that it uh, rotated. That's quite cool. I'm learning just the same as you. And these parts do open up, so they can open up and close. There's an actual proper grip. And uh, Smoke does have a separate bomb for feeding people. So in this fatality... Focus. There we are. In this fatality what would happen is... Um, smoke would bring this out of his chest compartment. And then the opponent would look up and scream. And when their mouth was open he would just drop the bomb right in there. Uh, in fact, actually, no, it didn't come out of his uh, chest, it came off his shoulder. That's right, I would forgotten about that part. So this, hopefully, should just clip in at the top here. Mm, shall I just try and do that? Um, hmm. What if this is something that, uh, you know, has a back and a forward? 
So this is this is all hard plastic. So um, the the armor for smoke is um, is soft plastic, but hmm, I'm having a bit of a problem uh, getting this to grip in here. Hmm, is that that it? No. I wonder if it's the smoke effect. If that's getting in the way of it. Don't know. You see, I keep thinking I've got it and then it falls forward. See, I mean, these parts here are obviously supposed to grip into the front and back of the shoulder plates here, but it's just in refusal. Oh, there we go. Okay, no, it does work. It just takes a little bit of force. Um, I, I needed to use more force than I wanted to, but um, no, it's still completely fine. But there, there you have it. Uh, there is the bomb fatality. Um, so as you can see, it looks like the bomb grip doesn't want to actually sit up, like as if that bit is a little bit loose. Um, let's bring the camera up a little bit so you can see. Let's put hand in the way. There we are. So um, now you can see that's what it looks like. So that's uh, that's that's quite cool. Yep, I think I'm quite happy with that. That looks like a fatality. So uh, smoke would drop the bomb into the person's mouth, and the bomb would go off, and they would explode, and smoke would stand in his uh, standard little pose. So yes, I do like that cyber smoke is you know entirely well, an entirely new move set, entirely different fatalities and things than what human smoke had um, in Mortal Kombat 2, because Mortal Kombat 2 smoke was just a clone of Scorpion. In fact, I don't think Mortal Kombat 2 smoke even had fatalities. Neither did Mortal Kombat 2 Noob Cyber. Um, it's also interesting because uh, Cyber Smoke, uh, well, Human Smoke, was the friend of the younger um, Sub-Zero, uh, Kuao Lang, I think her name was. And um, when Smoke starts getting more possessed by the demon, starts becoming more Smoke than, than human, he ends up teaming up with Noob Saibot, and uh, Noob Saibot and Smoke become a kind of tag team in one of the later games. Not in the new canon timeline, in the original timeline. So, that's interesting to see. And in terms of hands, let's see what we have. So it's the same on each side. So we have the gripping hand, for holding things. We have the martial arts tiger claw hand. You can see the difference between the, the two hands there, so two different types of grips. And of course we have the open palm hand, like so. And uh, that's the same for both left and right. And the additional part here is additional hair tassels, uh, just in case you lose any of the three hair tassels that's on the top of his head already. Um, so it's for fun, just take out the uh, little bombs. Since we've done the other fatalities, we'll move this box out of the way. chest. Then that there is, uh, there we go, that there is sort of like what his uh, blow up the world fatality would have looked like. So let us remove some of these accessories and um, I'm going to keep the smoke on him because I think the smoke uh, the smoke parts are quite cool. Uh, we'll move the, the scorpion spear. Also, the, the scorpion spear is actually quite different. Um, it's a trident. There we are. I lost the camera for a second there. It's a trident rather than the the regular spear that um, the scorpion has. So it's quite cool that they've they tried to make a difference between the character but also respectful and keep the original aesthetic to him. 
So we'll take off this shoulder piece, which does just clip off, which is very nice. And let's do a bit of size comparison, shall we? There we go. So the first one to um, do a size comparison with is, why not, the uh, Cyber Initiative Linkway Brother of them is Sector. And also it's uh, known that Sector and Cyrax actually hate each other. Um, well, Smoke and Sector hate each other. Sector hates pretty much everyone. There's not many people that actually like Sector. Um, he's a bit of a jerk. Uh, because he killed the original Grandmaster, who was his father, and he also demanded that uh, machines are better than uh, the human Linkways. So um, he demanded that everyone in Linkway must become a cyber initiative, which is where Smoke and Sub Zero tried to flee the facility. And Smoke ends up getting captured and turned into a machine, where Sub Zero, the, the younger Sub Zero, escaped. And that's when Sub Zero ditches his mask and becomes Unmasked Sub Zero in Mortal Kombat 3. That's the story behind that. There's a bit of interesting lore for you. I say interesting. Interesting by my standards. It's a little bit different from how other people's interesting. So, along with Smoke and Sector, let us also take a look at Kazuya. And some of you may be thinking, hey, where the hell is Cyrax? And um, I have ordered Cyrax, but he's not arrived yet, so look forward to that video coming in some point in the future. And the next one, so as we can once again see, Kazuya is a little bit bigger than uh, Smoke and Sector. And now let us bring in he is the emperor of our world. He is not king. He is Khan. He is Shao Khan in all of his glory of his ginormous throne. Let us move Kazuya back a little bit here. Uh, we'll keep Sector in shot and we'll just show the size of Shao Khan by comparison. So um, if you imagine, um, I mean, actually, this, this is. The Mortal Kombat 2 throne of uh, Shao Kahn, but that would be roughly what the fight would look like. And then Shao Kahn would be like, round one, fight! Uh, as he was known to do. So in terms of scale though, which is what we're going for, um, there is Shao Kahn in his throne sitting next to Cyber Smoke. So... Um, as you can see, the massive size difference of the Emperor himself. The Emperor of all of that world, which is multiple realms, not just our world. Although, it is all just our world because it's all been merged into our world. The next one we need to take a look at is the Prince of the Shokan, winner of nine Mortal Kombats consecutively. It is Goro himself. And he is absolutely massive. So massive, in fact, that he doesn't actually fit in the screen. So let us readjust the camera once more. Bring it up a little bit. And there you can see, we can just barely get his ponytail in. Um, Shao Kahn, you are not the main focus of this video, it is smoke. So let us bring him back into the centre of the picture. And let us stand Goro next to smoke. And there you see the sheer height difference of Goro and Smoke, where Smoke barely comes up to the the second set of shoulders of Goro. You can see there, if I could draw a straight line, that's the head of Smoke and the body of Goro. So main Mortal Kombat characters tend to come up to Goro's first set of shoulders rather than the second set of shoulders. Oh, that's not an easy thing to say. That's a bit of a tongue twister. So, um, this is Goro. And last one, as of course, he is a boss character in Mortal Kombat 3. And let us bring in the centaur himself, Mr. Motaro. Which I remember I did have this fight more than once. Um, generally with Mataro having a better win-loss win ratio than what I did. So, 
Um, there you have the height comparison of Motaro in comparison to Smoke. And if we uh, readjust the camera a little bit, you can see uh, the feet positioning. So there is Smoke and Motaro next to one another. And you can see that once again, Smoke is significantly shorter than Motaro. And once again, if we just move sector back a little bit, then you can see the actual length difference of Motaro versus uh, Cyber Smoke. So, um, yeah, it's quite, uh, quite a fantastic difference between them. And I think that's us in terms of all of the equipment, the size comparisons and all that kind of stuff. So, if you enjoy my fun and nonsense little videos, please do give us a like, share and subscribe. It is only a small click for you, but it does mean a lot to me. And it also brings regular updates to your newsfeed, which uh, may or may not be a good thing, depending on how you feel. Onwards, Motaro. Nay! <laughs> that is one unhappy Motaro. I don't think he enjoys being used as the horse part. Um, centaurs tend to have a little bit more respect than that. But anyway, that is it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed and thank you very much for staying until the end. Um, that is currently the end of our little Storm Collectibles reviews for just now until more arrive. We have a Cyrax and Raiden on the way, so look forward to seeing those at some point. And I also have the Unmasked Sub-Zero on pre-order. Some of you already have the Unmasked Sub-Zero, but he's not yet available in the UK from where I am. I am in Scotland. I am a big Glaswegian cat from Glasgow. That is what the Grand Cat is from. So, I hope you all enjoyed and we shall see you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.